Uh, as Apple hits a new all-time high, our next guest is worried a pair of painful scenarios are unfolding in the market, and one of them could spark a 15% sell-off. Julian Emanuel is BTIG's chief equity and derivative strategist. Julian, good to see you. Um, your two scenarios involve speculation uh, but on the part of retail investors. So tell us about those two scary scenarios. So you just talked about what you the group thinks the positioning is coming into this very critical earnings week. And we would suggest that much like we've seen with some of these smaller, more speculative uh, growth type stocks, that as well, the public is very committed to long call options, whether you're the world's largest market cap company or you're the world's largest electric vehicle company trading at 200 times 2021, or you're a premier semiconductor company trading at over 50 times, uh, you are vulnerable to disappointment here, particularly in light of the fact that when we think about what's happened with earnings season in general, you've had very tepid reactions to very good earnings reports so far. It's early, but this is the kind of setup that's poised for disappointment. Um, and then again, when we think about the other setup here is that we're going to get news uh, from both the Fed uh, this week, as well as further news on the, the stimulus negotiations front. And the market is pricing in a very positive scenario for both. Mm -hmm. We don't necessarily think the narrative is quite that simple. And all those together could spark a pullback. OK, so basically the two scenarios in a nutshell is the overshoot to the upside or the overshoot to the downside, which is exacerbated by the presence of the retail investor and primarily in the options market. Is that fair? It, it is in large part to the options market. Mm -hmm. So so what we've seen, particularly over the last week and the markets, admittedly a very positive reaction to the events that we saw coming out of January 6th and obviously the sigh of relief that January 20th went uh, without incident is the raising of the speculative uh, uh, pre predisposition of the public. And that is very much uh, sort of what we think we saw as a money manager back in 1999 and 2000, the start of what is the potential for a speculative overshoot to as high as 4,500 or by some measures, given uh, the valuations of the market, you could even see 5,000. Do we think that's going to happen? No. But what we do want to stress is that this is a time to, you know, just sort of reevaluate where you are uh, in terms of your stock holdings to not get emotional, whether you get that overshoot to, to the upside or you get this pullback to the downside and stay focused on the long term, which in our view is an economy reopening, uh, higher, higher share prices and a steeper yield curve. Julian, it's Tim. So outside of multiples and, and things that we can make some arguments, but you, you're, you're giving us some guidelines for both rational and non-emotional thinking meeting fundamentals. What's scaring you right now in terms of what is overheated? Leave aside, we're, we're going to talk about GameStop and, and retail FOMO, uh, and, and we've talked a little bit about the Apple multiple. Um, peel back a couple more issues that give you pause right now. Well, again, a lot of this advanced, Tim, in the last several months has been driven by small caps. And we do believe that small caps will outperform, but they have come a very far distance in a very short amount of time. And I think part of that narrative also leads back into the SPACs, which has certainly been a very, uh, you know, place uh, of, of extreme interest. And these are parts of the markets that while the long term story is very much intact in our view, are subject because of the increasing volatility to these kind of pullbacks that are going to look scary and frankly could drive some people out of the market. We don't want that to happen. What we want is for people to be positioned such that if we do get a 10 to 15 percent pullback, you can see yourself being a buyer there, not a panic seller. Julian, this is Karen. Thanks for coming on. So it seems like the market is kind of priced in a stimulus, yet it's Joe Biden might be hitting somewhat of a wall. How do you think that plays out? Could that be the catalyst for your sell off? Well, absolutely, Karen. And, and again, when we look at the dialogue uh, that developed over the weekend and what we see so far 
is it's going to be a struggle. We do think that the market is discounting somewhere in the neighborhood uh, of a trillion dollars in the first quarter uh, of, of the year, but it's going to be every single nickel is clearly going to be hard fought, likely uh, requiring some sort of uh, uh, deal making compromise with the Republicans. Uh, and it's by no means a guarantee. And, and so for, from our point of view, you really are pricing in this scenario without thinking about either the delay in the bill or any other residual risks uh, around the bill. Hey, Julian, your official price target for year-end S&P 500 is 4,000, but you also have a price target, which we showed, um, if the speculative mania grows, and that's 5047, which seems like a very precise number, considering this is a forecast, uh, you know, that you're speculating on if speculative mania grows. So how do you, how do you get to that number? Sure. So th there's two ways. The first is is the frame of reference is if you think about it in the four to five months prior to the top in uh, 2000, the Nasdaq basically doubled. Obviously, we're thinking about it in S and P 500 terms. And what we did was we looked at various measures of valuations, and one of these uh, measures, the cyclically adjusted P/E ratio, if you got to the all-time highs which we saw in 2000 ah. and, frankly, which we saw in 1929, that gets you to 5047. Got it. Julian, thank you. Thank Good you. Good to see you. Julian Emanuel, BTIG. Um, Guy Dami, I know a lot of things keep you up at night. Mm. Uh, do either of these two <laughs> scenarios, are they among those things? <laughs> Yeah, amongst my my advanced age, that keeps me up at night. I mean, we won't get into the nitty gritty details, but no, I mean, I actually am more scared of the fifty forty seven than I am of the downside. I mean, what he's talking about there is an absolute mania if we were to get there, given the valuations and the the time frames frames that he references. But you know, in the you know valuation, you know, we talk about it all the time, and it should matter. But when Jerome Powell effectively said that it didn't matter about a month, month and a half ago. That's when sort of all bets were off and the market's been on its merry way. Wrongly or rightly so, it doesn't matter. If you've made money on the way up, it doesn't matter if you understood the reasons why or if you've just done it on the back of liquidity. Those dollars in your bank account are, are exactly the same. So I understand what's going on. I am concerned by it. Uh, but there's nothing out there right now that indicates it's going to stop. Pete, just quickly, are you worried about that 10 to 15 percent downside scenario? And specifically, Julian is calling out the options market and the activity of the retail investor. Yeah. Yeah, I, there is definitely some concerns there, and we all know the mania that we're seeing, uh, some very irrational moves. I know we'll talk about that specifically later, but I think the reality is, Mel, um, I have been moving more and more into what we call stock replacements, where I'm getting out of some positions mm -hmm. of my stocks that I'm getting a little bit uncomfortable with and actually replacing that with options, putting calls on rather than being long stock. That way I have a very limited amount of risk and still can get some of that reward, especially given a little bit of time out into the future. So I've been doing more and more of that, and I've also been buying some spy puts to protect my positions as well. So I, I definitely have some hedges on looking for the possibility of a 5, 10, 15 percent pullback. All right. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.